in this video we are going to understand about microservices communication and specifically about rest template that is used to enable the communication among different services so far in microservices tutorial we have seen how to create a single microservice um, using different uh, features tools that are available so we have been using spring boot and uh, different swagger url and different features we have added we have communicated with the database and we have one service ready okay and we have interacted with that service using swagger ui and postman also and for that we have added user we have get user list user we have deleted the user and we have updated the user and other many more functions and so this is all we have done manually using this swagger ui but in real world application uh, this is not the case in real world we have different services for in a single application and these services must communicate to each other okay one two three four and they should be able to communicate this also so they should be able to communicate to each other to create a single application full fledged application in this video we are going to achieve that only so rest template is one way that is used to enable communication okay so let's go ahead and understand what is rest template so rest template has different method to do to communicate with the other services so these are uh, first set of methods are they are named exchange so using exchange you can pass uh, different http methods that are there get put post and interact with the service second set of methods are http method for entity okay so they goes like this get for entity and post for entity put for entity and other okay so for example they goes like this okay inside exchange you have to put the name of the method we will see in a while that okay and third one is the get for object and get post for object and put for object and uh, so on so these are the set of methods that we use okay so we will see these one by one so first we are going to see this exchange method so let's go ahead and move to demo part and there we will understand more stuffs so this is the user management client application that i have created in the same way that i was creating the uh, microservices uh, by going to this start dot spring dot io and you just select the configuration here and for rest template you just have to select one dependency and that's it you are done okay so i'm coming here so this is the same application static void main that you see run application it is there see, i show you this in earlier application user management application so it contains only these three four lines okay so it also has that main methods that is there so just for now ignore this okay for the communication to third party so in this application from this application we are going to call endpoints of this one user controller we are going to call get the user we are going to get the user list single user we are going to add the user different things but programmatically through another service okay for that we have to use rest template so let's see what is rest template rest template it extends another class and it implements implements rest operations so rest operations has different methods that are there to enable the communication and rest templates enables those one implements those methods to enable the communication okay so for 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 simplicity for very simple demo you can create the object of rest template by this new rest template that's it okay second i have taken base url if you remember this is the url that we used to access this controller that endpoint that they have okay we have this url and on top of this we have to append this user and user user id okay so this is the base url uh, specific endpoint we will add while executing a particular endpoint okay so now from this main method i am going to call this rest template so this is this contains the logics that is going to interact with uh, the third service okay so for demo purpose i am doing this in this main class only uh, in real world application my, where you are creating for the production and project purposes you can 
use it in controller service or whatever places you want so usually it is this code is in service IMPL okay but for demo purposes in simplicity I have kept it at this place only and not created any other class so focus on this this line rest template has this exchange method with these parameters first base URL if I go to if I go to this method it has URL HTTP method request entity and response entity and URI variables let's understand one by one how we can create that so for URL part I have taken base URL that is there and appended the specific endpoint that I want to access so in full in combination it is creating the total complete endpoint okay second HTTP method which method you are going to call if whether it endpoint is uh, get request it is put request or post request in this example I have get so I have taken this get request entity how we can create object of this request entity so there is a class HTTP entity if I go to the documentation of this it creates a new HTTP entity with the given headers and nobody okay details details about this request represents an HTTP request or response entity consisting of header and body it consists consists of header and body and what headers contain header is another class that is there to provide some methods it is a data structure representing representing HTTP request or response headers mapping spring header names to a list of string value so when you were requesting from an application you need to pass some headers in headers it contains the inputs that is needed by the service a kind of what type of input request that you are passing okay so content type what content type it holds I can set that so there are different content types it has application JSON it has URL form encoded it has XML type also but in our case our service is of JSON type it is taking input as JSON and it is responding as JSON so that is why I have to set content type this if it is not correct the service will not respond properly okay so we have by doing this we have this header object and with headers I can do many more things also if I go to header and select dot I can set the different kind of methods that it has add all and different key value pairs that uh, your third party expect, accept, expects you can pass it from here Okay, so in our case it is very simple so uh, we are good with this only and if we have headers we can create our request entity and second part is body body needed when you have post request you are going to create something okay in case of get you do not need body so we are headers we have headers only okay so this exchange last point is response type what is the type of response that you are getting and the rest service that you are interacting with what response type it is giving you okay if i go to this user and id what it is returning a single user object when you are calling this but it internally converts that user object into json form okay so i can get that in a string okay so if i give it as type string so i have to give that type here also by doing this uh, it converts that response that is uh, coming from third party properly into response a string response okay and if i have response entity i can get different things from response entity like status code i can get status code will tell me that whether it is okay if there is any error at service side in responding that that status i can get okay inside body i can get the actual content that service has written to me and inside headers if it is there or any header that like content type or any other header key value pair is there I can get that from this header value okay and I can print out that and the, if there is any other thing response entity I can get there also so just to show you it has all these status code string equals has body and these are kind of method that we can play around okay so for this we are done now so I have explained each and every word here okay so let me go ahead and run this application so this is simple main application so I do not want to start it as a service I have just simple main application main method 
uh, from where I can uh, call the third party service and print that response in console. So I have commenting this Spring Boot application so that it is not running as a service. So I have to comment it out this also. Okay, so that's it. So this is calling, this is the main method. This is calling this method and it is doing all the stuff that we need as of this point and when we have this response entity response from the third party I can do anything that I want okay so just go ahead and return this and one more thing before uh, running this if I show you the rest template class where it belongs so it is there here if I go to here it is there in spring web 5.1.9 release jar okay spring web jar it rest template comes with this okay so when you have dependency uh, when you have build.gradle that is that you have dependency this starter web so it automatically downloads that dependency if you do not want this you just download that uh, spring web jar from the internet and create a simple main application and import that one and you are good to go with that also let me go ahead and run this application and if everything goes fine, I should be able to get the status code, body and headers, whatever service is responding. And what actually we are hitting, we are we want to get a user that has ID as 5. So it will hit this endpoint, user and this ID 5. Okay, so let me go ahead and open this. Yeah, I got it. So these are the information loggers that are coming from the REST template class itself. So it is telling you that it has hit the get method and this URL and what are the headers that it is taking. So it is taking JSON, JSON and text plane also. Response status is okay with, uh, means everything is okay from service side and you have got the response. And reading a string to this JSON. Okay. And see here status code we have printed here in sysout.println. I got 200. Response body, I got it. ID5, first name this, last name this. And if same, I hit the same thing from this Swagger UI, I'll get the same stuff. Okay, if I go ahead and execute it and pass the ID5, I will get the same result. Got it? ID5, Arvind Kumar, Mail Noida. And same thing I'm getting here. Okay. And response header, what response header it contains? Content type. It is this, car set is this, transfer encoding is this, and date time is this. Okay, all these stuffs you can get. Okay, and these response headers you can also get from here. Also, if you hit the same thing from browser, if I go here and hit it directly from here, same response I am getting. And if I go and inspect this call, okay, and go to network and refresh this again. And this call is there if I select it here so I can see request URL is this request method is this uh, that I have mentioned so from the browser you get it automatically right but when you are doing programmatically you have to pass that status code is 200 okay and these are the response headers if I view source I can get it here content type is there transfer encoding date all these response headers got printed here right inside this okay these are the request headers that are there okay uh, all these stuff get passed automatically user is and upgrade when you were sending it from browser but programmatically these are not necessary okay we can live without it but when browser it is sending that automatically okay so except language and all these stuffs are there so okay so if i want to do more with this response type I want to play around with this right so just let me copy it and print it here response user so from the code I know it is returning a type user and if I get this user in our class from where I am interacting is there any chance that I convert that JSON directly into this user object so that I can play around more okay so yes I can do this so let I have already created the user class here this is the same one that is there so with the same fields id first name last name gender and address okay so this is the user management client and if i change this return type from string to user okay then i have to change this also this response entity and this response type should be same then i'll be able to 
get the user object directly right if i hit this response dot get body which contains the actual content dot get body go ahead and create the local variable user body right so you are directly getting the user object by doing this right so your service is returning you the ob content in json format but rest template by inspecting this mapping each field that you have in id first name last name here with this user object right and matching that one and you are getting this user body so it it looks into this first name that fields that it has name necessarily should not be same right you, you, they have user you can have this person as a person but with the same field right you will get the same result if i go ahead and run this and i am going to print user body so i need to have two strings so that contents get printed yeah i have so if i execute it again so i'll get the user body user object here right so if i run this i'll get the user as a object there are two calls for the get that is why two things are coming at the same time right but here user object see how the content is printing response body here it is printing that in a string form that is json also okay and here it is the user object that is getting printed okay so this was about the simple get request and all about that exchange needs base url headers request entity and all these stuff okay so in the next video we are going to interact with other endpoints like if you want to create a user how do you pass how do you call that okay how do we say this post we will see that in the next video and we will get the less list of users and other things we'll play around other flavors of the exchange also okay so i'll see you in the next video till then enjoy bye bye take care